Now it's fair to say this MP20 range from Mizuno looks absolutely stunning on the eye and we already know that nothing feels like a Mizuno. But the question is, is this style of a substance? How do they perform in the hands of the average golfer? The one way to find that out, get that camera moved, hit some golf balls, and we'll put all three head to head and then I'll give you my overall opinion on these great looking irons at least from Mizuno. There's already been plenty of pictures that have floated around the internet. Uh, really since the Open, I uh, first seen these, uh, these pictures released from this MP20 range. So there's no secrets there, but I'll, I'll throw plenty of images up for you now to take a look and start to form your own opinions. And effectively, we've got three models. We've got the MP20, uh, I think you've got to call that a pure blade, is where it starts from. It then goes into the MMC, which has got a bit of tungsten weight in there. It's still a fairly small and compact head and profile. And then we've got this HMB model, uh, slightly more bulk, bit thicker top line. I've got to say in terms of looks, they all look pretty good. I'm more of a fan of the cleaner lines from the MP20 and the MP20 HMB, uh, but very much down to a personal preference. But if we're talking about looks, first of all, I mean, I always say that I'm a sucker for a bit of chrome and there's plenty of there in there. Uh, plenty of chrome in there. The MP20 Pure Blade is absolutely stunning. It reminds me a lot of a club I used to play a few years back, which is the MP5s. And at the other end, I'm a massive fan of this HMB, which is new to the range. Like I said, bit of bulk, a bit of mass, all forged clubs all perhaps aimed at a different golfer and we'll find out what those differences are when we start to test. First of all, comments down below. On views alone, in terms of how these things look, which one you, would you be going for? Right, so we're gonna start things off. We're gonna hit some range balls and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about how they look at address. Um, and we'll start off, I think, with the smaller profile, this MP20, the one I would call pretty much a pure blade. I think, like I said in the intro, stunning on the eye in terms of what you see um, on the shelf um, as soon as you put it down at a dress it is that thinner top line and it's everything you'd expect from a blade i ain't gonna bore you with any details of that because that's exactly what it looks like nothing new nothing different there uh, as far as i'm concerned or what i'm looking at right now um, interesting point of loft this is more traditional it's 34 degrees so again what you'd expect from a traditional blade the other two irons that we're going to be looking at are stronger lofted at 32 degrees. So again, not mega strong in the grand scheme of things about what's happening right now, but 34, 32. So we're obviously going to see a difference in numbers. Um, like I said, it's a very clean looking club, minimal offset as you would expect. I often wish I could hit this good out there on the golf course because that's a great start. Um, straight away, first noticeable thing and first ball in, so we'll see what, uh, what happens in the end in terms of outcome. You can see the, the, the weaker loft. A little bit out the bottom groove there. Certainly didn't find a sweet spot with that one. Uh, what, you, what I noticed from the first ball in particular was the fact that ball flight um, was relative to that 34 degrees worth of loft. Interesting question as I'm only two shots in, but the first thing that springs to mind is how many players are actually looking to play this type of club nowadays? I'd be interested to see Mizuno's own sales figures on what they expect from the sale of the Blade as opposed to the HMB and the MMC. Because to me, um, the first thing I'm thinking, and that's only a couple of balls in, but let me, uh, that's a super feeling club. Only using range balls at this stage and we'll get all the data collected with, uh, with the seed golf ball. Um, I'm already looking down on this club and thinking, I can't wait to get to HMB really, based on the fact that the question I was gonna ask was, you know, how many of you gonna, would seriously consider using this club? Um, and I say this club, a blade-like club. I don't think, I haven't got a great deal to say about that, if I'm perfectly honest with you. 
it's a superb looking club it's got great feel at this stage just off of a range ball and I'll, I'll update you on that later it's a blade it's a nothing feels like a Mizuno blade it looks stunning performance is gonna be I reckon 150 odd 7 iron so for me nothing new there I'm going to switch it up quite quickly because I'm more interested in, if I'm being perfectly honest, in this MMC and HMB. So let's get switched straight over and get into this MMC club and see what's happening with a little bit of tungsten weight to help me out a little bit. Right, so over to the MMC and a couple of images up on top for you now. And again, for me, not too dissimilar from the previous model in terms of looks. Um, personal opinion, it's an okay looking club. I don't think it's moved on a great deal. Um, in terms of the tungsten weighting, something we see from a lot of clubs in terms of giving, uh, positioning um, CG, slightly different again in each iron to assist with uh, what you want to do, what you want to achieve from the certain club. Um, and again, that's what Mizuno have done here. Uh, at address, it's still a relatively thin top line. The overall profile to me just looks that a uh, little bit larger overall. And like I said, from that top line, a little bit thicker uh, than what we've seen and perhaps just a little tad more offset I mean first ball in but totally different sound uh, off of that and like I said we're only using range balls at this stage so I'll update you at the end in terms of the feel of all three when we get some proper golf balls down Hit some decent balls, and again, once again, don't forget this now goes to that strong aloft to 32 degrees, but ball flight is very similar um, to what we've just seen from that uh, 34 degree lofted club. And once again, that um, strong aloft is often a lot to do to counterbalance what we're doing in terms of CG and the tungsten weighting. Immediate thoughts, again, uh, if you've got the previous model, and only from memory, because I've not hit those, I'm not seeing anything that jumps out at me that says this is massively different from the previous uh, MMC model. So at this stage, we don't want to finish off with that one because that was off the bottom. Uh, at this stage, two clubs in, I'm sitting on the fence a little bit. I'm sitting on the fence because you know my reviews I always try and be as honest as possible. There's nothing wrong with either of the clubs we've tried so far, but there's nothing jumping out at me either. And I want to say that I'd also, I'm bearing in mind MP18. There's nothing that's jumping out with, at me compared to MP18 models. But we've got one to go. So let's switch over to with a new kid on the block really, which is this HMB. Okay, so on to this HMB. And for me, this is, it's like a, it's like the MP20 blade on steroids. It's just that little bit more pumped up all around. So it looks very, very similar. The minimalistic uh, effort in terms of any markings on the back, I think look absolutely, it's so clean. It is stunning to look at. Um, slightly wider sole and top line is considerably bigger based on where we've come from, from the MP20 blade, but still very manageable, I think. But it's really the first differential between the three clubs really is that top line and for some people that won't appeal um, like I said it is visibly bigger overall but I think as a golf club it looks like a traditional blade with a bit of muscle back in it it's it's stunning from the back maybe just that little bit of a thick top line might be slightly off-putting for the more traditionalists who are looking for that blade type from Mizuno oh Okay, first ball, so let's not say too much. But the first thing interesting to me is, again, how clubs differ in terms of ball flight. Same shaft in all three of these irons that I've hit. Right, we've got a, we've got a change of opinion here. So we started off with two mediocre responses. I'm now reaching for a ball because I'm eager to hit this thing again. We've got something different going on. Right, ball flight is, I, it's the highest ball flight, but it seems it's a strong, powerful ball flight. And again, 
The last two clubs, so I've just moved from the MMC at 32 and this at 32. And again, different ball flights altogether. Let's just hit another ball. Oh my word. This is, this is a different animal altogether. Right, I'm pausing a bit because I'm trying, to, I'm trying to work out how to phrase this. In fact, what I might do is shut up for a minute, hit some more balls, get over to the seed golf ball and collect some data. And, but my, my immediate feedback is, wow. That's, I just, this is so different. Um, in terms of performance, but also in terms of, and I can't shut up because uh, I want to keep it in balls here with this. Um, I've hit four balls there, I think it was four. All have gone in, in, in a pretty decent region in terms of dispersion. Ball flight strong and powerful. Feeling only off range balls at this stage was superb. And the ball just literally zips out of there. The first question I'm asking is, uh, out of three, I'm like all over this straight away. But let me go and collect some data. Let's have a sit down. Let's analyze the data, see where the differences are, at least in terms of numbers. And I'll give you a, a more considered evaluation because I'm a little bit excited at the minute. Oh my word. I don't need to do an evaluation. That is one of the best irons I've tried in a long time. Seriously. Now, sometimes reviews don't need to be complicated. I like to keep them as simple as possible. Tech spec, forget it. Forget everything. It's all gone out the window because all I'm going to talk about very, very briefly is the performance of these three clubs. Before I get into the data, let me talk about feel because obviously we moved into a proper golf ball to collect the data. Um, I always struggle with acoustics inside. I would prefer to play the clubs outside to get a, a, to give you a better opinion on how they feel. But again, superb from all three, to be perfectly honest with you. The buttery soft feel definitely comes down from the blade type again, but that's when you're really sort of puring one out the middle. But for me, the HMB again offered really good feel and acoustics from what I was getting off at least in here so far, but would certainly put them right up there in terms of what they've achieved. Um, Let's get into the data, but first of all, maybe I'll put in the dispersion. Uh, you can see there the shortest ball and perhaps the widest spread in terms of dispersion came from the blade type. And again, my ability at my level to find the center of the club uh, wasn't quite as good and I sprayed it around a little bit and we did drop off in yardages, which we'll get to very, very shortly. The other two, not a lot to split them to be quite honest with you. As you would expect from my performance, there's a few that are all over the show, uh, but in Overall, more than happy with the performance in terms of dispersion, front to back and also left to right. Right, into numbers. Let's put up on screen first of all. Let's start with that MP20 blade. That's the one that's 34 degrees. And obviously we're going to expect the shorter yardages is one thing we're going to look at. But here they are in front of you now. Okay, so ball speed 114 on average. Uh, spinning, as you'd expect, 6940. Very, very good spin number. 156 overall carry distance and again very very consistent in those carry distances um, peak height 96 and lang angle 48 as i said in the review really i don't think in the numbers nor what i've seen out there nothing different than what i was expecting so for me the mp20 superb club and for what it is brilliant but did I see anything that's really different from what i've seen before in the mp18 range no and i didn't see that in the numbers either on to now the MMC, and again, here's the numbers for the MMC. So you see a massive jump up in ball speed is the first noticeable difference. Again, going back to that stronger loft, but 120, almost 121 ball speed, uh, spinning at 6,250. So again, great spin number for, for this kind of loft. Uh, 168 carry, launching at 17.3, 97 peak height, and 48 in terms of, so again, 
Interesting in terms of peak height and uh, descent angle, very, very similar to that of the 32 degree lofted iron, and that's a, again an, an argument that we keep on having, but similarities even though stronger lofted. And a performance yet again for a stronger lofted, although it's done particularly well in and around 168 yardage, spinning really well. I think it's ticking every box that you'd look for. And the MMC for me, the only thing I would say, perhaps didn't tick a box in terms of looks. On to the final one, which, like I said, I was a bit taken aback with in terms of when I was hitting the ball first off in terms of initial impressions. Here's the numbers on the HMB. Okay, so first of all, uh, that ball speed. And take this from, let, let's go back to the first one, really. The blade, which is 114 ball speed, went out to 122.5 ball speed, 6.3 spin. And for this loft, that spin's incredible. 171 carry. 17.4 is the launch angle. Uh, 101 peak height and 48 in terms of a descent angle and again uh, what i like to see there is I, I did mention when i started hitting the balls out there that this was by far the, the ball that was the ball flight that was uh, certainly going highest it seemed to be really going up there into the sky without being a weak ball flight and getting out there at 170 and not being affected by that spin that spin is still at 6.3 i think for me like i said ticks every single box you couple that with the fantastic feel that they've got that with how good they look and these are all personal things now in terms of looks and feel but for me i can i cannot criticize that hmb at all i'll tell you what i'd say it's not a criticism for me personally but i think what some people might struggle with is the thicker top line and the bulk and mass of it that is the only thing other than that I cannot see why anybody who tries that club would not want to stick it in their bag straight away. I'll give you another but. I'm being told that these clubs are going to retail in and around the HMB. The RRP is £180 a club, £180 an iron. And again, that's a separate debate. I've done reviews in the last week or so where saying these, these clubs aren't relative to average golfers, so you shouldn't be reviewing them. Well, we've got another one here because this is now irons in at 180 from Mizuno. So, but like I said, that's a separate video. But that's another potential thing that is going to obviously put people off is the price. But in terms of a club just monitoring on its performance alone, uh, out of the three for me, I don't know anybody, unless you're a traditionalist and you want the traditional lofts and you want traditional looks in terms of ad address, I can't see how you would choose the MP20 straightforward blade over the HMB. Because for me, the HMB is just giving you everything that a golfer would ask for. I can't give it any more higher praise than that, so I'm going to shut up. That'll do. That's the review done, isn't it? I have got no more to say. The only bit I will say is thank you for watching. Uh, hit the like button. Comments down below. Just tell me what you think. Tell me what you think of how they look, what my opinion is of that HMV. Uh, perhaps on that price thing, I know that a few people have something to say about that as well because it is, it is creeping up again on these irons. Other than that, have a good day, and uh, I'm going to carry on it in that HMV for a little bit longer because I enjoyed every minute of that. And uh, I'll see you soon.